Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have And will never ever 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 leave each other And now, it's time to tell you guys how easy it is to make your own podcast with the app called Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. It costs you nothing. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your computer or your phone if you like. And then Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with minimal listenership. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Anchor. It's absolutely free. Three, two, one. Blast off. You can find our fantasy football content at fantasysixpack.net. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fantasy Six Pack, where you can find this podcast and many other great podcasts. What we're going to do today, guys, is our first game preview show. Oh, we're going through all 14 games. But first, we're going to jump into what we saw last night in that Chiefs and Texans game. Pretty exciting game, guys. What do you think? It was it was actually pretty exciting, but then in the second half, it kind of dulled down a little bit. Mahomes did his thing as usual in the second half. Deshaun was having a tough time trying to keep up. Yeah. Well, Deshaun, got, uh, Deshaun was the top fantasy scorer of the week, right? And because of the, all the garbage time points. Actually, believe it or not, Sammy Watkins was, if we're going by PPR scoring. He scored uh, 21.5 points, and then Deshaun Watson was second with 20.82. Where was uh, Patrick Mahomes at? He was third with 20.44. So he was only .4 off of Deshaun. Yeah. Mike, what did you think about the performance of CEH in his first game? I think he did really well, uh, except for him at the goal line. He looked really bad there. Yeah. I think he carried it, like, what, six or seven times, probably for negative two yards. Yeah, he got absolutely obliterated on a couple. Of, he just looked like he bounced off a wall the one time at the – He looks really run. good running the ball, though. It's insane. He's yeah, a shifty he, guy. Yeah, he was extremely shifty. He is quick as well. And just think about what's going to happen when he actually gets work in the receiving game, too. Was he kinda... should be a consistent uh, running back one if he gets both of those every week. I was kind yeah. of shocked they didn't use him more in the receiving game. I saw one play. He got blown up on it the one like time they threw to him. Yeah, I think they just wanted to kind of ease him into it. Gave him 27 carries or whatever it was. 25, yeah. but still, that's a good show out. Yeah, no doubt. Um, are you guys worried about Tyreek Hill at all? He struggled a little bit. Yes and no. He, You know with Tyreek Hill, you, you get the high ceiling, but a very low floor. But even when he didn't hit his ceiling uh, last night, I mean – he still had a decent floor of 15 points. He got the touchdown. Uh, what was it? The last touchdown they scored? Yeah, he caught five or six targets for 46 yards in that one. Touchdown. He was pretty close to his projected. So, I mean, I think what owners expected is what they got. So, I mean, the touchdown saved him tremendously. That's for sure. Yeah, I, no doubt. I'm thinking this Patrick Mahomes is just a really good quarterback and really good quarterback spread the ball around and, I think this might be the year where Tyreek Hill doesn't have the high ceiling, but he has a high floor. Because you know the offense is going to be in the red zone a lot. Do you think they're going to be more of a run team now? And what we saw in week one is what, like, you'll see more often, like more better rushing numbers? I I, I think they're going to throw to get out to the lead. And then I think because they're going to be so much better than everybody, I think they're just going to be able to run it down their throat. I feel like that's going to hurt Mahomes' value a little bit. Perhaps. It, there's, they're going to meet a couple teams that can keep up with them, and they're going to have to resort to throwing the ball a lot. But it, not many offenses can keep up, keep up with Because right teams. now only 20, point, or 20 points right now, so 
I mean, he had a good game statistic wise, but their quarterbacks can easily go over that if they get in a shootout like Matt Ryan, Dak Prescott, or any of them. Yeah, he just he he, he just might not end a... up as quarterback one, which would be weird. But yeah, believe but... it or not, Mahomes actually threw it just as many times as Deshaun Watson, and Watson was down most of the game. Well, yeah, who also... knows what they're doing with the play calling in Houston? What was also uh, a little weird about the game last night on the Kansas City side was Demarcus Robinson playing more snaps than Nicole Hardman. I don't know if you guys saw, but Hardman played, I think, 17 snaps only. That's scary. Yeah. I mean, Demarcus Robinson, luckily for Nicole Hardman, Demarcus Robinson looked like shit. (laughs) So uh, maybe we'll see more Nicole. Uh, in the future. Yeah, but last night was not a good coming out party for him at all. At all. Honestly, with Tyree Kill there, I don't see uh, McCall Hardman being able to do too much. They're basically the same player. So I think Sammy Watkins benefits the most out of anybody in this offense. Yeah. Other than uh, like Tyree Kill and Kelsey and all them. Yeah, because Travis Kelsey did his normal thing that he does pretty much. Seems yeah, like for he sure. Did week out yesterday, too. It'd be nice to see Watkins finally be consistent throughout the year. Yeah. Um, now switched over to the Texans. Uh, f- guy, to be honest with you, going into last night, I was um, calling David Johnson every time I referred to him, the corpse of David Johnson. But he looked good. I think he had he 11 did. carries for 77 yards or something and a touchdown. He looked like he had his burst back. He looked uh, – uh, I'll eat my words, man. He looked good, Michael Plant. I know you're – I feel like you're a little higher than um, Mike and I on him, but what what do you think about how he looked? You're gonna have to start calling him Frank and Johnson sign because he's revitalized uh, in Houston. He's looking to get a he's looking to become a top five running back again. He's he hears everything that we're saying about him, you know, all the criticism, and he wants to prove us wrong. And he came out and I think he proved us wrong. He definitely did. I mean, I don't think he's going to be a top five running back. I think he'll crack the top 20 after the way he looked. As long as he stays healthy, that obviously is the big it, if Absolutely. Health is always a concern with him. But if they include him in the passing game like they did last night and knowing how Houston's defense is going to be this year, he, he could benefit a lot from the catching. Yeah. I think he's back to being a borderline running back one every week, though. Maybe. Maybe. Um and then another another thing that we saw last night was uh, Will Fuller definitely being the number one target. Yeah, in this offense. big time. Yeah, it's hard whoever to bet on him. Whew. Yeah, all the all the people that got Brandon Cooks before Will Fuller are, are kicking themselves in the butt. I yeah. was one of them. Fuller saw ten targets, catching eight of them for one hundred and twelve yards, man. So, I- Believe it or not, not one of them, you know, was over what fifty, forty yards either. They were all short passes, like they were they were meant for him. Yep, you could just tell that he uh, he had that rapport with Deshaun Watson. You know, I mean, as the season goes on, I'm sure as as long as Cooks can stay healthy, Deshaun's gonna get a rapport with him. But until then, Will Fuller is absolutely wide receiver one in Houston. Yep. Plus, Cooks was a little bit injured, so that could have played a part. Right. And then tight ends, uh, Jordan Atkins caught both of his targets and a touchdown. Um, what about said, uh, what about your sleeper uh, your sleeper tight end in your yeah, own? Yeah, he picked the wrong yeah, one. Yeah, picked the wrong tight end. I had the right <laughs> idea, just picked the wrong guy. Yeah, he, well. He we did were... see a few. Fells did see a few targets, but we were... unfortunately did not catch the touchdown. No, I mean we were right about the tight ends with Kansas City, though they still are having trouble covering them. Yep. Um, all right, guys. Well, what do you think? You want to jump into our first game previews of the season? Do you think we're ready? Uh, I don't sure. Know. I can barely hold my excitement in, man. But uh, I'm first... beaming with excitement. <laughs> our uh, our first game we're going to jump into is the Dolphins at the Patriots. The Patriots are favored by five and a half. Uh, let's start with the Dolphins, guys. He never seems to go away. Ride Fitzpatrick. Fitzmagic. It's Fitz back. Magic. That was a little loud, bud. 
no chance he's starting in anybody's lineups this week against the Patriots defense, right? And maybe, uh, maybe if you're really, really desperate at a 16 teamer, it's crazy. He's very 50 50 against this team. Either he'll throw three picks like early in the season last year, or he'll end up beating the Patriots like they end up like the Dolphins end up doing every year for some reason. So if you want to take the gamble on him, if you don't have anybody else, if you ended up waiting way too long on quarterback, you could try it. Why not? Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I'm staying away from Fitz Magic this week. He's definitely – I don't mind him as a streamer later on, but unfortunately the Dolphins' schedule is pretty tough to begin the year. Obviously they see the Bills here pretty soon. And yeah, it's just, it's just mm-hmm. tough. I'd like to think the Patriots' defense is the same, but uh, all they got really back is Stephon Gilmore. The rest are gone, aren't they? Dante Hightower's gone, and he was a huge part of the defense. Yeah, he yeah. opted out. Patrick Chung's opted out as well. Those so. two alone is going to hurt their secondary and even their run game. So, I don't know. You, It'll be interesting. You would think, but knowing Bill Belichick, the Hall of, future Hall of Fame coach he is, he's going to figure it out some way or another. The Dolphins also have uh, they have two new running backs, guys, uh, Br- Matt Breida and Jordan Howard. If you had to pick one of them, LaPlante, who are you going with? If I had to, you know, uh, I'd probably go Breida just because the negative game script predicts he's probably going to get predi- uh, get more catches. Howard's not really the prototypical pass catcher. I mean, he could prove me wrong this year. He could have worked on it in the off season, but not gonna I'd happen. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably lean Brita, but it, it's a tough one. I'd probably lean towards with you as well that I would lean towards Brita this week. Howard would have to get in the end zone multiple times for him to outscore that's, Brita, I feel like. That's the thing. Do you see the Dolphins getting in the red zone against the Patriots? That's the gamble you take with Howard. Right. Yeah, yeah. Howard's definitely touched on dependence, so. Uh, wide receivers now, Devontae Parker, Preston Williams. You think Devontae Parker lights up uh, Stephon Gilmore, Mike, or no? Like nope. He did that, like he did the last game last year. No, right? no, no. What was last game an anomaly? Yeah. <laughs> Stephon Gilmore is probably the best corner in the league. You're telling me Devontae Parker is going to be able to burn him again like he did last year? Gilmore's probably going to want revenge. Does you know, that mean, would you start Preston Williams over Devontae Parker then this week? Do you like his matchup against Jason McCordy a little better or no? No, I don't like either. I think it's worse for the wide receivers than it is for the running backs. Yes and no. I mean, like you said, Devontae Parker is probably going to get shadowed by Gilmore all game. So Preston Williams is definitely going to have a little bit of an advantage not having him on him. And if it's the negative game script like we predict, Miami's going to have to be chucking it a little. You're the just question kinda, is, are they going to be completing those passes? Yeah, you're kind of – that's where you're you're leaning on Fitz magic. I'd like, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And then tight end. Tight end's a little goofy in Miami right now. Uh, it came out that Kaseki is not the starting tight end on the depth chart. It's actually Durham Smith. But uh, I'm I'm thinking it's because Gusecki's gonna play a lot in the slot, and Smith is kind of more the inline blocking tight end. So I think that makes more sense because they don't, the Dolphins really don't have another great third receiver besides who Jakeem Grant maybe. And with with you saying that, uh, I, honestly, I think Gusecki's probably the only one worth playing. Yeah, this week gonna, against the Patriots. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I was saying that too. Yeah, I, feel, I have a, I, I have a yeah. weird feeling about him this week. That he, if if you say if what you say is true, him lining up in the slot, I'm really excited to see what he can do. Well, I mean, think about it. Usually, a linebacker or a safety covers the slot position. And what did we just say about the opt outs? Dante Hightower, a big guy that usually right, covers yeah. the slot for him, and Patrick Chung. I, I, there's a good chance he could go off. Yeah, he definitely could eat. That would be nice to see him. Just get a lot of garbage points. That would be nice to see him return top five tight end value this week. I have him in a couple leagues. So uh, let's jump over to the Patriots now, guys. Boo. 
a That's new a uh, unnecessary. <laughs> a new look Patriots team with Cam Newton under center is in this matchup against the Dolphins. Uh, Mike, I Cam is your boy. I've known you for years, and you've always <laughs> loved Cam. Is he top ten play this week in Week One? Depends on if they go up early. I would probably, which is very likely to happen, I would probably not expect him to be a quarterback one. They'll probably get run a lot now that they got, what, four running backs for no apparent reason. But, ah, man, if it gets anything into a shootout, he's definitely going to be a number one uh, quarterback. LaPlante, where does our uh, fantasy six-pack rankings have him ranked uh number 13th right in between tom brady at 12 and jared goff at 14 he's got a really prime matchup i mean uh according to fantasy pros the dolphins gave up the most uh points to qbs last year on average 22 and a half and that was number one yeah, but can you really base it off of that now? Because Dol- the Dolphins changed in the offseason with, uh, why am I blanking on the corner's name? Byron Smith, is that his name? Jones. Byron, Byron Jones. Jones, yep, from yep. the Cowboys. And they got Kyle Van Noy as well. You don't think uh, the defense is going to be improved? On paper, yes. But until it's shown and proven, I mean, it's not for certain. It yeah. it does. I mean, just like when you get a new wide receiver or a new weapon for a quarterback, it. I mean, when you get new weapons added to the defense, it does take time to get that chemistry going. Sure, sure. Yeah, not a lot of continuity. I get it. That's that's actually why most people see the Chiefs repeating this year because they have the most continuity on their team returning this year. Yeah, definitely. Jumping over to running backs now for the Patriots. Kind of a nightmare, guys. I know, shocker. Sony Michelle, James White, Rex Burkhead. Have you is Sony who is gonna be starting? Is that what you guys have heard? Uh yeah, I mean he on paper he's he's supposed to be the starter. Uh I mean he is he's a little banged up though, so I mean the question is whether he's gonna last the whole game. Yeah. I don't even think it matters who's really the starter there. James White's the one to play, which is obvious. Cam Newton loves throwing to the running back. The only, th- the only thing I'm worried about with the running back situation in New England is you know Cam Newton in the red zone likes to take it in himself. So he's going to be vulturing a lot of their touchdowns. I wouldn't be playing Sonny Michelle. So no. if that was your option, I I would probably think of a new one because even if he gets – 15 to 20 cares. It's not going to be very efficient. He hasn't shown it in the past that he'd be very efficient, so I don't see why he would be now. What If, da- if Damian Harris was healthy, I would have had Damian Harris over Sonny Michelle in week one. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We're, I think we're all in uh, we're on agreement that James White is definitely the talking the mic, Don. Suck my dick. I- <laughs> Feisty. I think, I think we're all in agreement that James White is the guy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, jumping over to wide receivers, Julian Edelman, Nikhil Harry. What do you guys think? You think Edelman's a play? Yeah, flex receiver for sure. I mean, I wide receiver three two. I guess if you are s- struggling at the position. Where's our six pack rankings have Edelman at? He is twenty fourth, right in between Odell at twenty three. Oh, why? Hey. Two, huh? And and T Y at twenty five. Yeah, so that's borderline wide receiver too. I think that I think that's okay. Edelman will be in the slot mostly. And uh, do you think Byron Jones or Xavier Howard will go to the slot? Or Byron say- Jones will. Gotcha. He's he's uh, nifty enough to be in the slot. He can hang with Julian Edelman. I feel like nifty. I like your vocabulary. <laughs> So that would throw Xavier Howard on uh, Nikhil Harry then, huh? I'm excited about Nikhil Harry this year. Me too. Sam likes his tall receivers. I'd like to see how he does. It's it's definitely a good year for a breakout year for him. For sure. If he can stay healthy. Yes. 
Any other wide receivers you guys want to mention from their uh, their wide receiver core? No. Not until somebody steps up. Sounds good. Let's jump into tight ends then, even though it's kind of a toss-up there too. Ryan Izzo, Dalton Keene, Devin Asiasi. Uh, yeah, guys, the only thing I could say is for week one is maybe a DFS dart throw in the cash games maybe on one of those tight ends. I wouldn't even do that. If you're Who, nobody really knows what one's going to get the most snaps. I would, once you find out the situation more in the next coming weeks, they could be of value. But right now, I don't think they are. Sure. Yeah. No. I I agree with you. I uh, so the Pats are favored by five and a half. I think the Pats will cover, and I think they'll win. What do you guys think? I think they'll win. I think they'll win, but. I don't know. Someone tells me the Dolphins are going to put up a fight. I don't know if the Pats cover. Let's jump into our next game. Browns at Ravens. Ravens favored by nine. Let's start with the Browns. Baker Mayfield. Can you play him this week, LaPlante? I would stay away from him. Uh, he still has to prove that he's got to take the – he's still got to prove that he's taking that next step. And he's got a really tough matchup being at Baltimore. Agreed. Yeah, I. Uh, you guys might laugh, but I'm actually sitting Baker Mayfield in one of my dynasty leagues and starting Mitch Trubisky against the Lions instead of him just because I hate this matchup so much. Yeah, it's ugly. If I don't like the I don't like the wide receivers. I don't like the tight ends. I don't like Baker in this one. Man, I don't really like the running backs that much. If the Browns have any chance of winning this game, it's going to be on the back of the running backs. Has They're, to be Nick Chubb. He has to control the game. Yep, yep, no doubt. But I, I, uh, sorry, Laplante. What? Uh, where does our rankings have Mayfield at? I don't know if you want to know. You're is, it actually, outside, is it outside quarterback two territory? It, it's outside quarterback three territory if that was an option. He's uh, 29th right now. Actually, Mitch is ranked above him at 28. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Baker is definitely a stay away. But uh, let's hop over to the running backs. Uh, Chubb and Hunt, you know, Hunt's coming off the two-year contract extension. You think he's uh, going to get used more this week? If they're down, it's most likely he's going to be getting most of the receiving work. So, I mean, I can see him being a, a, a flex play, but it's still scary. Yeah. Nothing more than a flex for him. Yeah, Hunt's always, uh, always a flex play. Is uh, Chubb going to be flirting with uh, running back one numbers, you think, or no? I mean, depends on what Chubb you get. If it was like it was last year, early in the year, he can go off for 130 yards, but they didn't have Michael Pierce at that time. In the second game, they did have Michael Pierce and they stopped him, but they no longer have Michael Pierce. So it's going to be interesting to see what Nick Chubb is able to do now that they don't have that big man in the middle. I'm just scared that it's going to be tough for Chubb to return running back one value with Hunt there as well. I mean, it, like I said, it's 50-50. Last year in the in their first game, Nick Chubb had 165 yards, three touchdowns. But then in their second meeting, he only had 45 yards and zero touchdowns. What is the, the rankings different beto- difference between Chubb and Hunt? I wouldn't be scared to death, but, I mean, you are definitely scared. He, you would expect to at least hit. Probably drafted Beckham early for him to put up good numbers. No chance it, he's going to do that against Marlon Humphrey. But that's why that's why you have to play him. Unfortunately, I guess you don't have to play him. But drafting him in what the third, fourth round, he uh, a lot. If his quarterback's being ranked at twenty nine. There's no chance that Odell is going to be able to provide any value. It, all it takes is one pass, and Odell can provide you value. Do you like Jarvis Landry's matchup better, Mike? Yes. I think at least he's in the slot to where he's going against, I would assume, Tavon Young. I could be wrong there. You might have to fact check me on it, but I'm pretty sure it's Tavon Young. 
which they're both like the same size, so that's a good matchup. But Jarvis Landry is really good in the slot, and I see him probably getting the most targets, probably the most fantasy points out of the receivers. Agreed. I actually like his matchup, and it seems like in all reports that I've seen is uh, Landry's pretty healthy after offseason hip surgery, so that's good news as well. you like to see that. Um, Austin Hooper coming over after the big contract. Uh you guys thinking he is tight end uh, one material this week or no? Nope. Uh, yeah, you could probably find better options elsewhere. Yeah, definitely not David Ninja. Again, I don't like the matchup, and they, I don't even know why they got him in the first place because David Njoku is pretty good and they're stuffing him down on third and string for some reason. So because he doesn't block Harrison Bryant blocks a little more. You know, Hooper's a good blocker. And with Stefanski's offense and he did come out That's true. Stefanski yep. did come out and say that he's gonna be the one calling the place. So, that is true. That probably bumps it up for Chubb and Hunt a little bit. Yeah, so probably getting ten carries see, plus. Expect to see probably a lot of twelve personnel. Yeah, the, and the Ravens. Yeah. The Ravens are pretty good at stopping tight ends. Last year they were thirtieth in the league against uh, points scored against them for tight ends. Oh, yeah. So uh, Hooper's definitely. I don't want anything to do with him then. Let's uh, jump over to the Ravens now, guys. Lamar Jackson, the hot commodity that he was, well, that he is. Is he uh, going to be the quarterback one this week, LaPlante? Our rankings on Fantasy Six Pack have him at QB one. I mean, you'd you'd like to. He's most likely going to be QB one, but you have some good matchups across the board elsewhere. Whereas somebody somebody else can give him a run for his money, but it's probably. Are we saying like quarterback one overall, or just being even like just in the quarterback one conversation? No, the quarterback one overall. No, 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 no. Why? Who do you have quarterback one overall this week? This is going to be a low. I'm assuming it's going to be a low scoring game. It could get into a blow up, but I'm assuming not. It's a division game, but more than likely you're looking at Dak. Tom Brady, maybe Matt Ryan, somewhere like someone like that's probably going to be your leading quarterback one this year or this week. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, it's it's not a bad argument. I think the thing is, is just everyone expects Lamar Jackson to run the ball like he did last year. It's going to be impossible to repeat what he did last year. Yeah, it sucks though, man. I I think Davids is going to be good, and I've never been a fan of Ingram. I don't know what it is about Mark, but I'm just not a fan. There's a lot of saying that it's going to be like the Saints when Mark Ingram was there because J.K. Dobbins kind of reminds people of Alvin Kamara. That'd be intriguing. Yes, it would. Um, jump it over to – Yeah, but I wouldn't be starting him. No. J.K. Dobbins. Not until he proves it. Would you be comfortable starting Ingram as you're running back too? Yeah. He's probably looking at 15, 20 carries. Where is he at in the rankings of plant? Running backs. He is somewhere around here. 21. That's a little low. Who's he? Who's he? I mean, that's running. Or? That's running back too. Yeah. Who's he sitting between? Uh, he's got Le'Veon Bell in front of him, and believe it or not, Tariq Cohen below him. Melvin Gordon ahead of that. I'd that's kind of that's a little disrespectful. It must be the it, it must be the st- matchup. I would start Le'Veon Bell over Ingram this week because of the matchup. Uh, what about Chubb or Ingram? That's tough. Def- yeah, probably Chubb. You said Chubb was at seventeen, so that's it. Pretty close, seventeen to twenty-one. But I would agree with our rankers and say Chubb still. I. If it's a negative game script, I'm going to have to go with Mark Ingram, which I think it's going to be a negative. Uh, He'll get more receiving I mean, work. I meant to positive uh, Ravens. Uh, he's going to he's going to get the ball a lot if they're up. Agreed. So uh, jump it over to wide receivers now. And my guy, Hollywood Brown, 
probably going to be shadowed by Denzel Ward. Mike, you think uh, you think he'll be all right? Uh, I'd be a little hesitant to start him, but I still would be starting him probably as a wide receiver three or flex. Yeah, you're kind of always hesitant to start Hollywood just because. Yeah, you have no goal. idea. He might score thirty five. He might. <laughs> he might score you five. You know. Yeah. But I'd like to think his snaps go up and his target share will grow. Sure, so sure. I, and they're all I'd like to think it's nothing but positive for he him. He had a screw removed from his foot this off season after he had. The foot surgery last year had the screw put in. He was it was uncomfortable for him, so he had it removed. He's gained weight. I think he's just going to be an all around better receiver this year. Well, Plant, you got anything to add? And where is he at in our rankings? In our rankings, he's uh, wide receiver thirty, which is right around wide receiver three. Perfect spot for him. It really is because he is he's boom and bust. I mean. Yeah. And he's even more boomer bust because of the offense he's on. You know, the offense is going to run the ball down the other team's throat. So he's not going to get very many passing attempts. But, yes, he's going to be on the field a lot more this year. I don't, I will, I don't think I'll ever see him getting 10-plus targets in a game. Nah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I but he doesn't need it to stay fancy relevant. All it takes is one big play from him, man. Yep. And he and then that could happen every single time he touches the ball. Agreed. But is there any other wide receiver that you guys want that you would be willing to start this week at all? Or no, 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 no chance. I yeah, I don't want anything to do with any other receiver from this offense, really. Yeah, the only other pass catcher that I want anything to do with is Mark Andrews, and he's definitely. Uh, a must start this week. He had 34 total points against the Browns in two games last year. He's a beast. I yep. mean, right there, a 17 points a game in those two games. That's that's definitely tight end one. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't be surprising to me if he is top two tight end this week. This uh, this week, top five, no doubt for sure. So Ravens favored by nine, guys. You think they cover? Yeah, I I, I think this is going to be a blowout. I really do. First game of the year, I I think so too. But I think the next, second game, they play them a lot tougher. I think Ravens win 28-17. I think they cover. So let's jump over, jump into our next game, guys. Jets at the Bills. Bills minus five and a half. Let's jump into the Jets. Sam, I see Ghost Darnold. Terrible matchup for him this week. Yeah, don't even think about starting him. We can move along. Well, plan nothing to add. <laughs> Set him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bill's defense is pretty tough. I don't want anything to do with him. Uh, jumping over to running backs. Levy and Bell, Frank Gore. Adam Gase being Adam Gase all offseason, talking about how much he loves old man Gore. Shocker. It's extremely frustrating because I know we're all kind of left bell guys. I've always been a fan. I was okay with him sitting out. Go get your money, guy. But he's just not being used right by M. Gase, and obviously M. Gase can't use anybody correctly. But he's going to have to use him, right? With... He has There's to because no weapons on this offense. Guys. I feel like he's the best pass catcher on that team. Oh, man. I don't know about the best he's, pass catcher. Well, he's Jameson Crowder is pretty good. Sure, but he's definitely their best offensive weapon by far. Yeah, by James far, Crowder's yes. okay. He's just a target fiend. That's it. But yeah. he's, Le'Veon Bell has got really good hands. If we're talking pass catcher, straight pass catcher, I'd have to go with Crowder. But oh. overall weapon, Le'Veon Bell blows him out of the water. Yeah, I just hope Frank Gore doesn't vulture 8 to 10 carries in the red zone. He will. That's exactly what I think he'll get. If he gets the red zone work, too, that's going to – I'm not going to like that at all, guys. Leaving 10 to 15 carries for Le'Veon Bell, and he'll have to succeed in receiving game for him to be able to put up the numbers where you drafted him. Yeah, and, you know, Le'Veon Bell's a guy who needs 20 to 22 22 carries to get in a rhythm. He needs to get in a rhythm. Yes, yes, exactly. But apparently – Which is what Frank Gore is like, too – 
which doesn't make sense why they got the same person pretty much. We, they both gonna need a rhythm to get in to get some yards, and they won't be able to. We know that. I don't understand why googly eyes. Uh, Adam Gaze can't figure it out. Maybe maybe he can't see Le'Veon. <laughs> Crazy eyes. <laughs> uh, jumping over to wide receivers, guys. We already talked about a little bit about Jamison Crowder, and obviously he's the ultimate floor guy. He'll probably see close to ten targets, probably catching six of them for fifty yards or something, get you a nice solid eleven points. And then they got Brashard Perryman. He's kind of the boomer bus guy, but uh, you okay with starting Crowder or Perryman at all, guys? Or what do you think? I'd be okay with starting Crowder. I would also be okay starting Crowder, probably as a flex, though. See, the weird thing is, is I I can see Crowder this year because of the Jets' defense projected to be so bad. I can see Crowder. Pop, I don't know about leading the league in targets, but top five for sure. Yeah. The thing that does scare me a little bit about Crowder is that he was on the injury report last week with a hamstring. I mean, He's always injured. Yeah, you know, and hamstrings are just so touchy. But that's they just always a, linger. That's just something to monitor. Uh, Perry, as Perryman, though, guys, I yeah, stay away. Ugh. If you have to, which shouldn't happen on week one, because you should have your team that you drafted and that you should know who to start. But if you have to. I guess he might be able to catch a deep pass. Um, yeah. Unless unlikely with Sam Darnold. If if you're one of those unlucky people that drafted Kenny Galladay, maybe he's an option. Uh. Easy. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, Dylan drafted Kenny Galladay in a lot of leagues this year. Uh, I'm a big Kenny Galladay guy. You can uh, find my article on uh, Fantasy Six Pack about why you should draft Kenny Galladay. Well, Easy. now you probably are regretting Why? that. <laughs> nope. I can't help it. Oh. I can't help injuries, guy. Uh, jump it over to tight ends now. Let's change the subject quick. I'm getting sad. <laughs> tight ends: Chris Herndon, Ryan Griffin. Ryan Griffin got the extension this off season, guys. But I am. I think Chris Herndon's the pass catcher this weekend. He was going to make my tight end streaming article, but he was a little bit over um owned i think he was at like 56 percent owned in yahoo leagues or something just barely passed as your cut yep are you guys are you guys okay with starting to hern in this week as well i could see him being a borderline tight end one well plan i really like him i like his athleticism i like how tall he is i think i think he could be pretty good sure it just depends on sam darnold it really does i mean yeah you're right. Ferocious defensive line, man. LaPlante, what did, uh, what's Herndon at in the rankings? I knew you were going to ask that question. I already beat you to it. 21. He's uh, in between Jack Doyle at 20 and Ian Thomas at 22. I think he deserves to be way higher than that. I think so does Jack Doyle, but we'll get to him. I agree. We'll get to him later. But, uh, yeah, I if you're at a pinch... I'm completely okay with starting Herndon this week. Well, Plant, do you have uh, what the Bills were against tight ends last year? Up by uh, chance or no? I, I was actually trying to beat you <laughs> to it, but you beat me to beat me to saying it. Uh, uh, I got they, him. Yes, you did. They were actually uh, 27th worst matchup against tight ends last year, only allowing 5.8 fantasy points per game. Okay. Okay. I'm going against the grain and still uh, still rolling with Herndon this weekend. Jumping over to the Buffalo Bills now, guys. Josh Allen. Last time we shot, we saw Josh Allen was that playoff game against Houston, and he looked a little, a little goofy, a little wild with the football. Uh, he's He's got a lot of upside, I think, especially with that rushing floor. I think he's going to be quarterback one, uh, a quarterback one most weeks and I think this he could start off his season and I think he'll be a quarterback one this week. You guys agree with me or no? He's actually one of those people I was talking about that have a good chance to challenge for QB one this week because the Jets defense is just so bad. Yeah, with them losing CJ Mosley, him opting out and them trading away Jamal Adams, those are your two best defenders and they're both not there anymore. 
Yeah, so there's a good chance. And you know Josh Allen, he's not afraid to pull it down in the red zone and run to get a touchdown. Agreed. Agreed. Whereas uh, I actually have him in my personal rankings as a top five quarterback this week. Where is he sitting in the fantasy six-pack rankings? In the number seven. Lucky number seven. Pretty close. Who is he around? He's got Deshaun Watson at six in front of him. As of right now, Deshaun's leading. But yeah. <laughs> Matt Ryan at eight. Yeah. Mike, you got anything to add on Josh Allen or not? Well, they did say he wanted to run less. Don't like and that. If, that, if that's the case, I do not see him being able to put in consistent quarterback one performances. But you never know. Maybe his throwing got better. He got digs. He's got a decent receiving core now. He's obviously got a. It's all up to him. He's obviously got a cannon, and Diggs likes to go deep. So maybe it's a match. He just can't hit him. Maybe it's a match made in heaven. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, running backs: Devin Singletary and the rookie Zach Moss. Zach Moss is catching a lot of hype lately. You think Singletary is the guy still to own the plan or no? As of now, until he. Decides to fumble, I would go with Singletary. But once once Singletary fumbles, I've heard a lot of rumors that Zach Moss is going to come in and there's a good chance he could take the starting role. Well, it's his job to lose. Well, I am Zach Moss is going to get the red zone work, right? That's what reports are saying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want anything to do with Singletary this week. I, and mostly all season. Most, yeah, most of the season, unless... Unless there's an injury, I would I would stay away from the Bills' backfield. Agreed. Uh, I think that covers the running backs for the most part. I'd stay away. From, I think we all agree that we should, you should just stay away from that backfield until we get a little more clarity. Agreed. Uh, wide receivers: the aforementioned Stephon Diggs, John Smokey Brown, Cole Beasley. I like this wide receiver core, guys. They obviously got the speed. They got the possession with Cole Beasley and the safety blanket. I uh, I think Stephon Diggs can eat this week. What do you guys think? Mm, I don't think he'll ever see the targets like he did in Minnesota where sometimes he was near 8+. plus. I think he'll be more near 8 as his apex and probably less than that for most weeks. So it's going to have to really depend on the deep ball, which then depends on Josh Allen's arm. So I don't know. I'm not a biggest fan of Stefan Diggs. I stayed away from him in most drafts because of those reasons. So I'm, I'm, I would obviously start him this week, but you got to be scared that he might not be able to produce. Plus he's got, uh, I don't know, he's got all those people going up. John Brown, Cole Beasley, Dawson Knox is not going away. Yeah, I ide- I ideally you want Stephon Diggs as your wide receiver three. Hey, you know, as that's that, a far from grace that, for him. That you, boomer bus guy in your lineup. You just can't deny talent, though. This guy's talented. The one thing I'll say to uh, counter to Ike, he he's gonna score. He's gonna score this year. Like I said, talent's talent. The problem is his consistency. The, the, being on a high rush offense and having, like you said, John Brown and Cole Beasley around him, it's just about volume. But it, well, if right. if if he can get the ball, I mean, he does have the talent to take it to the house and the speed. Yeah, you think uh, with Diggs being around, you think that kills Smokey Brown's fantasy value that we saw last year? I, I'm pretty sure he floated around. A wide receiver two value all last year for the most part, right? It hurts it a little bit because that's pretty. Or Diggs pretty much took his role. Sure. Of, of going of being the deep threat. I actually, I actually think it helps him because now Stefan Diggs is going to be taking all the number one cornerback coverage, and John Brown. I mean, you seen what he did last year against number one cornerback coverage. Now see what he can do against number two corners. I think it's going to open it up more for Beasley of anybody. He's going to be constantly in the middle of the field, right in front of Josh Allen's eye. It's going to be easy for him. Yeah, it is the easiest easiest throw on the field. Them and the tight end, you know. So their tight end is uh, obviously Dawson Knox. Is he worth a start? Either you guys think so or no? Mm, 
He's got a good matchup. Sure, of course he does. But with all those wide receiver weapons and plus they're going to want to run the ball with Singletary and Moss, I just don't. And with Allen himself will probably maybe run. I don't know. If yeah, you're play- I, I just don't see as many targets left for Dawson Knox. If, if you're playing him, you're just kind of hoping he falls into the touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, which you might, and then that obviously Very can- possible. catapults you close to a tight end. A tight end he wouldn't be bad story. for daily fantasy. Yeah, dart throw. Yeah, for sure. wouldn't be horrible. It'll be cheap. But uh, I have a feeling that we're all going to take the Bills and the five and a half in this game, right? I think this game yeah. is oh, yeah, going to be a blowout. Like they're going to smash that. 27 to 10, I'm feeling. So the next game... The Las Vegas Raiders and the Panthers. That game's a pick 'em. Let's jump into the Raiders first. The quarterback Derek Carr. Uh, he, the matchup's great. Unfortunately, starting Derek Carr is just kind of blah. But uh, you don't know about his weapons either. You don't know if they're gonna be able to perform and get open it's just hit a bunch of rookies pretty much yeah and then Darren waller yeah yep. it's gonna be leaned heavily on josh jacobs yeah okay. that off that offense is probably gonna be mostly ran through josh so jacobs i'd probably this not year. start i'd probably not start Derek carr even though the juicy matchup you're still out on car huh yeah there's there's a chance this game could be a, a shootout and in that case that you, you want car but even so I still think Josh Jacobs is going to get a lot of the red zone work. When they get in the red zone, they, they're look, John Gruden's looking to run the ball. Yeah, I'm okay with starting Carr in super plus leagues or two quarterbacks league, leagues. It's my second quarterback, but nothing more than that. Uh, uh, LaPlante, La I'm just curious, where is he at in the fantasy six-pack rankings? He is 20th. Okay. Right. Tyrod Taylor is ranked above him, and Phillip is below him. Philip Rivers. The old man Rivers. Rivers got a great matchup as well. But uh, let's jump into those running backs then that we just talked about. Josh Jacobs, Jalen Richard. Are we actually going to see Josh Jacobs be the man this year, LaPlante? Is he going to get the receiving catches? If you're listening to him, he thinks so. Um, I I'm a little biased. I think so myself too. Um, but it's it's got to be seen because he, Gruden just doesn't seem to want to include him in the passing offense for some reason. I think he can easily be the number one running back this week. He's going to get 20 plus carries. The Panthers defense is crap. He's more than likely going to go over 100 yards. Hopefully he gets the receiving work that I now think he will, and I I, I see him being what what running back one for sure. Pretty bold, but that's I can I, see it too. It all hinges. It, you have to catch passes to be the wide receiver yep, one or yep, the running yep. back one. So or you just have to go absolutely off on the run and the ground. Yep. Yep. Uh, so you're not nervous at all about the, them re-signing Jalen Richard. And him returning as the pass catchy back? Uh, a little bit, but I, I can't see Jalen Richard taking much work with Josh Jacobs. They spent a the first round pick on him. They want to make him a primary role in this offense. Sure. Yeah. I Here's a really good pass catcher in Alabama. I don't know why they're not using him in Oakland like that. Yeah, I don't know. I have him as a t- uh, top ten running back this week, though. Uh, jumping over to the receivers, we talked about him a little bit. Starting on the outside, uh, two rookies, guys. Henry Ruggs, first-round draft pick, obviously, and then Brian Edwards, third-round draft pick, and then you got Hunter Renfro in the slot. Uh, any of these guys worth starts or no? Yeah, one of them is worth a start. I just don't know which one. I'm scared to start all three. Uh, again, I think it's going to be a running-oriented game script. 
for both teams. So I don't know. I I, I like Renfro. Maybe throw like in Renfro rugs. To be honest, I think he's got the rapport with slot Dave, guy. With yeah. Derek Carr. You know, Derek Carr likes to think he dump the ball down the field. That's kind of Renfro's game. If out of the three, that's probably who I would go with. Laplante, what do you think? Uh, there's a lot of hype on Brian Edwards, but until one of these guys proves it, I'd I'd go with Hunter Renfro too. But he's still not even going to be the leading guy on this team, I think. Yeah, I it yeah, it's a really good matchup, but I I'm just kind of a wait and see guy with those receivers, to be honest. I I think Darren Waller might be the guy most of the year. Yeah. I uh, obviously I, he's gonna be flirt with top five tight end potential every week, and in this matchup he should eat pretty well with him being talented in Carolina. Obviously, rebuilding that defense after they spent every one of their draft picks on defense. Odd uh, drafting style. Uh, they had to do something, man. But uh, now jumping over to the Panthers, Teddy Bridgewater caught a little bit of hype this offseason. Starter in Superflex League, guys, or no? In a Superflex League, yeah, but I wouldn't be starting him anywhere else. Have to be a real ballsy move to start him in Superflex, but he's got some good weapons, namely DJ Moore and Christian McCaffrey, to help him out, but you, you never know. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I want to wait and see what this offense looks like a couple weeks before I think about I agree. Teddy. But uh, let's jump into the running back, and he is the running back, and that's Christian McCaffrey. New offense. You guys think he's used the same? I think if he's not used the same, Matt Rule is not going to be in town very long. Yeah, you've seen. Well, well it didn't win them games, games last year, so I think you need to get your other guys involved. That's why they got Robbie Anderson. You're not wrong. You need other weapons, but if if you're not going to use your your best weapon majority of the time, there's something wrong. Yeah. And Love Plant, your bold take was he's going to be the first guy to repeat the thousand for thousand, and uh, I'm sure you think that. He's going to jump out to a good start then, huh? I'm honestly more worried about him reaching the 1,000 rushing yards, being that they're always going to be down. Uh, he's he's absolutely going to get 1,000 receiving yards, I think, being down all the time. I'm just worried about him getting the rushing yards, actually. Yeah. Uh, he's obviously still the man. I s- expect him still to be the, the running back one this week, so. Jump it over to the Panthers wide receivers now. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel. I like DJ Moore, man. I like his matchup this week as well. I think he has a very good chance chance of having wide receiver one numbers. What do you think, Mike? I think so, too. He's a target fiend in that offense. Well, at least last year he was, but... With Teddy there, hopefully he uses them like Michael Thomas, and that means all good things for DJ Moore. Yeah, the Raiders got two uh, two very young corners on their team, and I think DJ Moore is just going to eat. Agreed. Where's he at in the rankings to play? Wide receiver nine. Perfect spot. Perfect spot. Uh, with them having two young rookie corners – you think Robbie Anderson torches one for a bomb touchdown this week? I can see it. Very good chance. So, throw him in the flex. Hope for hope for that. Yeah, DFS start throw idea uh, yep. isn't a bad idea as, as well. Curtis Samuel, not somebody I'm interested in. I would not be starting him this week. I, I he was supposed to be the number two last year, and he didn't perform well. And I think he lost that to Robbie Anderson. So now he's kind of lost in the. As a gadget player. Agreed. Um, tight ends. 
long time uh, tight end Greg Olson there. He moved down to Seattle in the offseason, obviously making room for Ian Thomas. Any value there, LaPlante? Uh, until t- Teddy Bridgewater has proven himself as a decent quarterback in this offense, I'd probably stay away from Ian Thomas. Just too many weapons. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think the matchup's bad this week. In a, in a pinch, and if you punted on tight end, I would be okay with you starting him. I just really wouldn't recommend it. But in a pinch, he was in my tight end streaming article, so if you have to, I get it. No, he's got a, a, a prime matchup, so I understand the streaming value. It's just uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You don't know if Teddy and him have any rapport or anything like that. That game was a pick em, guys, so uh, who do you got in that game? Uh, I'm going to have to lean on the side of talent and go with the Panthers. I'm going Panthers, too. Wow, and it's going to be a clean sweep on the Panthers. Next game up is uh, Seahawks at Atlanta. Seahawks favored by one point. Russell Wilson, Mr. Unlimited. Unlimited. Is he going to be QB1 overall this week, guys? Could be a shootout in Atlanta. Very good chance. Very good chance. I agree with both of you guys that uh, it's more likely him or Matt Ryan can end up as number one. I would start both. Yeah. I I'd be starting a lot of people from both from this game. Absolutely. Yeah. It, st- stacking a DFS lineup with a lot of people from this game is probably a good idea. The question is which one, though? Well, All of them. Hopefully we can tell you. <laughs> Chris Carr, well, jump it. Well, we pretty much agree. Russ Man's the definite start. So yes, lock him in. Jumping over to, to Chris Carson, I did see. I did get an update today saying that Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde are going to split carries, and that I knew that was going to happen. Pete Carroll's going to go with the hot hand. I knew it. That that hurts his value so much because usually he's guaranteed like fifteen to twenty carries. You don't think? Uh, I think he drops to like a running back two or three now. Ooh, you don't think Carroll's just talking shit, huh? <laughs> he does like to talk. If shit. he isn't, then that's what I see happening. But if he is talking shit, obviously Chris Carson's back to borderline running back one, definite running back two. In all honesty, what that means to me, I think, is that Chris Carson is the guy until he fumbles. until he fumbles. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Until if, what can happen at any time? Yep. I think it's good, and then it could be Carlos Hyde show for a little bit. Yuck! Cause it, that sucks though, because Chris Carson, I feel like, is way more uber talented than Carlos Hyde. Man, for some reason, he just can't hold on to the football at times. Right. But I'm still, I'm, I'm okay with starting Carson as my running back too. Where is he at in the rankings right now, Laplan? He is at. Running back 16. Yeah, so running back two. High-end high end running back two. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You like him over like somebody we talked about, Lev Bell and stuff? In this matchup, yeah. He's just – I, I expect it to be such a shootout, and he's going to get, as long as he doesn't fumble, a lot of red zone attempts. Sure. He'll still get a few targets in the passing game too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're wide receivers. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Obviously, everyone's stoked about DK Metcalf and what he showed last year. And he's only going to get better as he develops more of a route tree and all that. Tyler Lockett, I feel, is one of the most underrated wide receivers in fantasy football. That guy is so solid. For a little guy, he's always been Russell Wilson's red zone target for some reason. He's just able to find the, the spot in the zone, I guess, to get open, you know. But uh, if you had... That's not going to happen this year. Ooh, why is that? DK is now the new favorite red zone target, or even Greg Olson. Ty Lockett's now just the guy to maybe possibly get him down the field, which was probably used for Chris Carson. So I don't know. I don't see much value for Ty Lockett. He's obviously still going to be pretty good, but wide receiver two, three. 
you uh want to make a pride bet there uh michael P- or uh what dk ends up better than lockett yeah i think uh tyler lockett, just this week no i think all season i think tyler lockett all season and- dk could probably end up top 10 wide receiver easy i'll take tyler lockett over i met bigger faster stronger and if he learned even a semblance of more of a route tree it's a wrap we'll see the plant who do you agree with here <sighs> This is a tough call. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to lean with uh, Tyler Lockett just because he's got a large game sample. Like I love DK Metcalf. He he gets targeted so much in the red zone, which is so positive. But until he proves that he can come down with that ball in the red zone, Tyler Lockett is going to be a target fiend, especially if Seattle's defense can't keep up. Were they DK had seven at, touchdowns last year. Were they ranked at LaPlante? They are ranked at Tyler is 18 and DK is 20, so they're pretty damn close. Yeah, and they're definitely both must starts this week, especially in this shootout. So jumping over to tight ends, uh, Greg Olson comes over from the Panthers. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And, you know, Jake Ho- Jacob Hollister, and then I actually got an update about Will Disley today. He's healthy, guys, and he's going to be active. And I loved me some Will Disley last year. So this tight end group uh, is a wait and see kind of thing for me. I don't. Obviously, Greg Olson's probably going to lead him in snaps, but I think all three of them will probably play. Am I right? Yeah, all three will play. I think the one who has the most potential for red zone targets is probably Greg Olson. Mike, anything to add, or are you just going to make a lot of noise in the background? That was the plan. That was me coughing. <laughs> Shocker. I haven't moved a muscle pretty much. I know. My ears are bothering me from these headphones, though, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, we're not even halfway one, through. Two, oh. But three, two, one. Mike, do you have anything to add about the tight ends or no? I do not. Okay, let's move on to the Falcons then. And uh, Matt Ryan. Pretty juicy matchup. You know, the Seahawks corners, obviously Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley are going to be better. So I expect Matty Ice to have a big week. Anybody disagree? Nope. I'd start him with full confidence. Yeah, he's a top five QB this week easily. Yeah, I struggle a little bit with the top five just because he doesn't run at all. But it's it, it's definitely possible. Uh, running backs, Todd Gurley. You think he gets that massive workload that he saw in the early years in uh, with the Rams? Because people are saying he looks great. What do you guys think? I don't know. It's if if he could stay healthy, he he could take that workload and turn it into what he used to be. But if the Falcons are smart and they think they can make a playoff run, they're going to definitely manage his workload. I'd like to think, especially week one, they probably won't go all out with him. Yeah, they they might want to save him. They'll probably monitor his workload a little bit. But uh, I expect him... He'll be at least a running back two for sure, no yeah. doubt. Oh, yeah, he's, he's ranked 15th right now in fantasy six-pack rankings. He'll catch some duff offs from Ryan, you know. He'll, he'll definitely be relevant. So wide receivers, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. Does Calvin Ridley start his ascent of uh, taking over as the number one guy this game, guys, or no? Not this game. Maybe not halfway through the year, maybe not till the end of the year, but it's still Julio Jones is number one for sure. He's still the, a beast. Yeah, he's definitely Matty Ice's favorite target. I, Calvin Ridley is definitely going to have the easier matchups because he's very talented. He's not going to be drawing number one cornerback coverage, so he can easily take advantage of it. But Julio Jones, even with number one cornerback coverage, still burns corners. Yeah. Yep. You worried about Julio's uh, red zone problems at all? Or no? Always. 
Yeah. They want to get him more red zone targets. They always say that, but let's hope it actually happens. It's just hard, man. When you get in the red zone, teams know they want to get it to him, and they're just double and triple teaming him. Yeah. Todd Gurley is really good in the red zone, and that he will probably be used there a lot. So I can see Julio maybe getting less, even less touchdown catches than he did last year. So let me ask you this then, Mike. Um, they added Hayden Hurst this offseason as a tight end to take Hooper's spot. Does he walk into all those red zone targets and walk into those targets that Hooper had last year or no? Maybe not the red zone targets and probably not all the targets, but most of the targets he'll he'll get. But I don't think he'll get most of the red zone targets. He doesn't seem like a red zone type of tight end to me. He's got caught some of the most hype that I've seen from Yeah, Brian's it's crazy. This off season. LaPlan, where is he at in the fantasy six pack ring? Uh, Hayden Hurst. In this matchup, he is actually ninth tight end. In between Evan Ingram and Jared Cook. See, I mean, I I look at Hayden Hurst kind of like the DeAndre Hopkins situation. Austin Hooper got over 100 targets last year. I mean, those targets got to go somewhere. Right. Yeah, he's definitely... A top 10 tight end this week and going forward. Um, I'm taking Seattle to win this game, guys. What do you think? I think they I, win it, too. There's just more. I think Russell. I think they win on the field goal. Yeah, Russell's the better quarterback. Jump into the next game. Philadelphia Eagles at the Washington football team. Carson Wentz, a little banged up. Shocker. Is he uh is he gonna be fine starting this week? I'd be scared. Phil I mean uh Washington they have a really stout defensive line, so Carson might have to run around. And if he's not healthy, it's it's gonna be a risky matchup. Is it his hamstring, right? Soft tissue. Uh actually I can't remember if it was his hamstring or his uh hand. Sure. Mike, uh, what do you think about Wentz this week? I'm scared about his injury. I'm scared about the old line being a little banged up. I'm scared about his running back being banged up. He's probably healthy now, though. I'm scared about his wide receivers being banged up. It doesn't look great for him, except for his two tight ends, which one is unhappy because it doesn't have a contract. It doesn't look great in Philly right now, to be honest. Um, yeah, I know it's a pretty good, decent matchup against... Washington because their secondary is kind of poo. Um, but I think if I can, I'm going to stay away from Carson Wentz this week. Yeah. Uh, it was actually his groin that was giving him some issues. And uh, Doug Peterson said Monday that he's resumed practicing in full. So that's positive news. But even with that defensive line, I'd still be a little scared. Sure, sure. Running backs for the Eagles, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. Sanders was definitely hurting with a hamstring. Is uh, Which is scary. Yeah, hamstrings are always scary. They were saying that he was going to get the full workload this offseason, but I, I'm not sure this week after him being banged up. Are you still okay with Miles Sanders as your running back one, running back two? I'm a little bit worried now because of the ham- – before the hamstring injury, I was all on Miles Sanders. I thought he was going to have a breakout year. But once the hamstring injury happened, I kind of like tempered the expectations a little bit. So now, I don't know. He's obviously a starter every week, but, man, it's going to be it's gonna be tough for him. Yeah. Hamstrings do not go away. Sure. Yeah, little LaPlante, where is he at in the rankings right now? He's uh, running back 13, right on that fringe for running back one and running back two. Yeah, I definitely want to have him as my second running back compared to my first. So, uh, the depleted wide receiver court, Philly, is looking like Deshaun Jackson, Greg Ward. Jalen Rieger was is injured, but it, it's actually sounding like he's playing. Have you guys heard that as well? I would assume he's going to be playing. He, I think he practiced in full today. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yes, he did. Yeah, so I don't see why he wouldn't be playing. The guy, the guy in this wide receiver core that I want this week is definitely Deshaun Jackson. The yes, sir. revenge game, and obviously the one game he played last year was against this team, and he absolutely murdered them. So he had two touchdowns over you, 100 yards receiving. If you have Deshaun Jackson, he is a must start this week. Moving to tight ends. Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard. You guys think you could start them both this week? Not with certainty that both are going to give you decent numbers. But, I mean, Zach Ertz, yes. I mean, you got to start Zach Ertz. He's, he's, besides Deshaun Jackson, he's the number one option for Carson Wentz. I would start both. Dallas Goddard's a little bit more touchdown dependent. But I still feel like he's gonna get decent amount of targets more than most of the wide receivers. It seems like Deshaun does is not a target fiend. He's more of the big play guy. Don't know about Jalen Rieger. Don't really know about Greg Ward either. So it's gonna be very tight end and running back oriented for Carson Wentz. Yeah, I like Zach Ertz this week. Hopefully he, he eats and you see him return top three value. Uh, moving over to Washington, Dwayne Haskins starting quarterback. You want anything to do with him? I'm going to stay away. He could be a very good, uh, daily fantasy play. Stack him with Terry. Yeah. I want to wait and see. Not this matchup. Uh, last year... McLaurin had his best numbers against the Eagles. Unfortunately, the Eagles didn't have Darius Slay last year, though. And I'm going to assume he's going to follow Terry everywhere around the field. Does Darius Slay follow people around? Yeah, he's usually a, a, a shadow cornerback. He, he does follow him around. But actually, I do remember last year when they traded for Darius Slay, uh, Darius Slay actually played Terry McLaurin the second game of the year. And I remember seeing a quote that Darius Slay was uh, saying that Terry McLaurin was the second hardest wide receiver that he's had to cover. So that's some high praise. And Dwayne Haskins and Terry McLaurin are very good targeting each other. Yeah, um, no doubt. No doubt. I just, yeah, I maybe a DFS dart throw, but other than that, don't start him this week. Just like right. just like this next position group. I know Antonio Gibson is catching a lot of hype now since AP's gone. But I don't want to start Antonio Gibson, and I don't want to start J.D. McKissick, who is the apparent starter. I'm going to wait a couple weeks on that whole situation before yeah. I make a decision on that. I think you guys... To move along pretty fast, I think the only guys that you should start in your lineup from Washington is Terry McLaurin, right? I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Eagles are favored by five and a half. You guys think they handle Washington in Washington? I don't think they handle them, but I think they cover. By, they're going to win by a touchdown. I agree. Next game, Bears and Lions. Game is a pick <laughs> Mitch Trubisky was named the Bears starter last week by Matt Nagy. Like I said, I'm uh, starting Mitch over Baker in a uh, super flex league, and I'm okay with it. Mitch usually usually kills the Lions. I'm also okay with him throwing a DFS dart throw. I pro- I'm not going to start him in regular one quarterback leagues, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Great matchup, and like you said, he does. He just torches the Lions. Um, if you got other options at quarterback, I'd definitely go with the other option. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with Mike. Yeah. Um, running backs. Tariq Cohen, David Montgomery obviously had the groin injury, but he actually practiced in full, and it sounds like he's going to be a go. You guys- I wouldn't be playing David Montgomery. Do yeah. not like it, especially without any like full practice against that groin. I'd be starting Terry Cohen over him anyways. Flex uh, play for Terry Cohen for sure. I'm worried they might re-injure it. 
Well, Plant, where is Cohen at in the fantasy six pack rankings? I'm curious on this because he's obviously not going to take over Montgomery's workload in the run game. He's more of a pass catching guy. He's actually 22. He's remember he was behind Mark Ingram at 21. That's actually pretty high. Man, he could have a decent week. Um, <laughs> wide receivers: Allen Robinson, Anthony Miller. Uh, Allen Robinson is a definite start. Obviously, they don't. We talked about Darius Slay not being in Detroit and being in Philadelphia. Allen Robinson sh- should eat this week. He should see ten plus targets and be fine. I like Anthony Miller as well. You know, what do you guys think? I think Allen Robinson is just going to be a target fiend the entire year. So I think Allen Robinson. Start. Yeah, must start. Yeah. Anthony Miller, if if you believe in the Bears offense, I'd, I'd throw him in the flex if you really believe in the offense. He killed Detroit mm-hmm. last year as well. He had over 100 yards and two touchdowns on Thanksgiving last year. So that was kind of Anthony Miller's coming out party. So, yeah, I would have no problem with throwing Anthony Miller in as a flex this week. Yeah, even even with uh, Darius Slay last year, the Lions were uh, the fourth best matchup against wide receivers. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I've been saying it all off, off season too. The Lions defense is crap. That's why every time I see a Lions prediction to where they could finish in that – top two in the division kind of just makes me chuckle. Um, but tight ends and the Bears, Jimmy Graham obviously came over. I don't think we really need to talk about him until he does something. He did yeah. get, he did get a lot of trading gap buzz that he looks good. He's running well and all that, but I don't want him. Yeah. Moving along. No tight ends from that offense. Move along to Detroit. Matthew Stafford, he's back, guys. He's back from his back injury. <laughs> Is he uh, a, a top 10 quarterback this week against this stout Bears defense? Or are you looking elsewhere? Looking elsewhere. Yeah. He's without his star wide receiver, too. Not looking great for him. The running game is a mess. Nobody knows what's going on there. Yeah. I mean, it's just a tough matchup. I like Stafford. For season long, but this week, yeah, I, I, I'm staying away. Where is he ranked at, LaPlante? Hopefully outside top 15. He is 16. Nice guess. 15 is Aaron Rodgers and 17 is Garoppolo. It's, yeah, it, that's a good spot for him. If he can stay away from Stafford this week a little bit. Like a... Mike said earlier, this running or these running back situation is kind of a nightmare. DeAndre Swift's a little banged up. Carry on Johnson, probably banged up too. Let's be real; he seems to always be banged up. And then they got old man. They signed old man Adrian Peterson last week. Who do you guys want to start? Any of these guys? What do you I don't want to start any of them. I feel like it's going to be. 10 carries for one, five for the other, maybe eight for the other, a few targets here and there for each of them. It's going to be a mess, especially against the Bears. I think Swift will see about five targets through the air, in all honesty. That'd be nice to see. Yeah. Because right now I'm thinking he might not have like any value with Peterson going there. Yeah, it's definitely going to be running back by committee. Yeah, I like I like Swift's upside just because of the pass catching, but that's that's strictly it. Obviously, he's not going to get any more than, like you said earlier, eight carries. So it's his ceiling's capped. If you had to start one, I don't even know who I'd start, guys. Probably DeAndre Swift still. I don't know about you. I'd go carry on Johnson. If Funny, he... I go Adrian. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, guys, stay away from that backfield. <laughs> Uh, moving to wide receivers now, Kenny Galladay, unfortunately, this is uh, sad, sad news for me. He pulled a hamstring earlier this week, and he is listed as doubtful now. That means, to me anyways, I think I'm not a huge Marvin Jones guy, but with Galladay being out, I think he's going to have a good day. 
and I think he should be shooting up rankings for this week now that Galladay's out. You guys with me there, or you disagree? I don't know if he's going to have an easy time, because like you said, the Bears' defense is no easy task. But you scared a, of Kyle Fuller? I'm more scared of the pass rush. If no he can get, Quinn, probably. <laughs> If he can get the ball off fast to Marvin Jones, I can see Marvin Jones having a good day. I just don't see him having the deep threat in this game. I can see him. I can bump him up a little bit in your rankings, but I see top twenty. Don't be I, I, too I, excited. I don't know. I see top twenty-five value for sure. Yeah. So if you guys don't seem to like Marvin Jones, then that must mean you guys like T.J. Hawkinson. So what do you guys sell me on TJ Hawkinson as a tight end one this week? I am not selling you on that because I don't like anybody on that offense this week. LaPlante, hey, you got anything? I mean, last week he did. I mean, last year he did have a breakout week, and I can see him do it again. But never replicated it again. No, but I can see him doing it again this year, just just because, and then never replicating it again. But no, I'd stay away from him. I'm taking the Bears this week in a low-scoring game at 17-13, I think. I'm also going to take the Bears. Yeah, I'd take the Bears, too, low-scoring game. Jumping now to the Colts-Jaguars game. Colts are favored by seven. Phillip Rivers coming over towards the Colts. If you drafted Phillip Rivers, this is the best matchup you're going to get. (laughs) Yes, it is. You've got to be starting him. Uh, yeah, if you drafted them, you got to start them for this game. Nothing else to say that. Yep. Uh, definitely a DFS play. Yep. Let's go to switch, go to running backs and uh, Marlon Mack, Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines. Obviously, Hines, the pass catching back. But between Jonathan Taylor and Marlon Mack, who do you guys think is going to lead the running backs <laughs> this, this week? Marlon. I'm going Jonathan Taylor. My, it, the rookies are good this year. Let's have a resurgence of rookies. Let's get him in there and see what he can do behind Quinn Nelson. Everyone loves Jonathan Taylor, too. Yep. So I, I'd have to go with Jonathan Taylor. I think they're going to they're gonna jump out to a lead on this on the Jaguars, and they're just going to grind it out. Are they both startable? No, I'm not starting Marlon Mack. In this okay. matchup, yeah. Jonathan, okay, Taylor, yeah. Jonathan Taylor, you start your flex, in my opinion. But, uh, Does Hines have any value, real quick? No. no, no, wrong game script. Yeah, that's true. Uh, moving to wide receivers: T. Y. Hilton, Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman Jr. Who are you guys? Who do you guys like best out of those three? Obviously, T. Y. He's saying he feels really good, but Phil Rivers loves his tall receivers. And he's got Michael Pittman there on the outside. Probably can catch a few deep passes, maybe even a touchdown here and there. Definitely. I think T.Y. will kind of replicate. Well, he, he remind, he'll probably be like the Keenan Allen of the Colts offense this year. Kind of Rivers' is safety blanket a little bit, you know what I mean? Most definitely. And then, uh, yeah, but Paris Campbell, stash him away on your bench and see what he does. Yep. Jack Doyle. Love Jack Doyle's matchup this week. He was my favorite guy in my tight end streaming article. Um, put Jack Doyle in your starting lineup. Set it and forget it. You guys got anything to add? No, I agree, especially with the injury to Trey Burton. For sure. Now, we ran through the Colts pretty quickly. Let's jump to uh, Jaguars. Gardner Minshew, Mustache Mania. I love me some Gardner, and I'm okay with starting him in uh, Superflex Leagues this week in this matchup. Really? Man. Oh. Garbage Colts time, defense guys. is good. Garbage time. <clears throat> A lot of garbage points for Gardner Minshew this year. Yep. Yep. That's why I think he's going to be a... Uh, if he can actually complete those passes, yeah, he's got one good receiver that's and then a rookie who's pretty unknown and a running game that's pretty unknown so i don't know i don't i 
I don't see Gardner having any sort of semblance in this in this week. I feel like. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know, man. We just seen uh, what you saw Deshaun Watson do in uh, garbage time yesterday. He was completely irrelevant until that time happened yesterday. So. Until- yeah, but mo- but a lot of that was from his rushing touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, I, agree. I, I don't know if I mean Gardner can do it, but I don't know if he will. Sure, I get it. I get it. Maybe I'm just a little too high on him. <laughs> uh, running backs, obviously, wild thing last week. Them cutting Leonard Fournette. Rookie James Robinson is at the top of the depth chart, followed by Chris Thompson, and they just signed Dare Agumawale. Who you guys want in this backfield? I don't want any of them. This week, just I want to see. Good. Yeah, I want to see what it looks like first. Fair enough. Uh, wide receivers: DJ Chark, Chris Connolly, Lavisca Chenault, and uh, DD Westbrook. Obviously, DJ Chark's the number one wide receiver here. Love him, Ike. Since you're down on Gardner in this matchup, you're also down on Chark, or what? Yes. I think he's more of probably a borderline wide receiver too. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, our rankings have him at uh wide receiver two at seventeen. Hmm. Good spot for him. But uh, yeah, I'm staying away from all the other receivers. I'd still be starring him. DJ? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Oh yeah. Because you draft him so early, there's no chance you gotta bench him right away. Yeah. And then tight end. Uh, Tyler Eifert, James O'Shaughnessy. Eifert catching a lot of praise in uh, training camp. He looks healthy. He's catching passes. Might be a big red zone threat for uh, for the Jaguars' offense. You guys uh, waiting to see, or are you okay with throwing him in your lineup this week? I'm going to wait and see. I'm waiting. But I'm feeling he might be back. I'm waiting to see if he can stay healthy. I don't blame you there. Uh, Colts are favored by seven. I have them winning this game 34 to 17. Yeah, I think the Colts are going to dismantle the Jaguars. Yeah, it's going to be a whomping. Now, jumping into our next game Green Bay Packers at the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings favored by three. Aaron Rodgers, what do you guys think? Is he a quarterback one this week? I do not think he is. No, he's... He always has a tough time against the Vikings. They always play him well. They have a really good pass rush. Plus, they got Yannick Ngakwe, so it's going to be even tougher for him. Yeah, but Daniil Hunter's on the IR, so I mean... That is true. That is true. So, I mean, he's he's borderline QB1 for me. Just because he's Aaron Rodgers. But, I mean, like you said, he does have trouble against the Vikings. Yeah, I only want to start him in super flex two quarterback leagues other than that. I feel like this is going to be a more run-heavy game for them. Yep, it's going to be a slow-paced game. You know, Minnesota yeah. like, likes to play it slow. Um, running backs, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, and Thunder Thighs, A.J. Dillon. Aaron Jones obviously scored 19 touchdowns last year. You think he's the guy leading the way still? Yeah, until I see anything different, he's still the guy I see taking most carries in this offense. Yeah, I don't think either uh, either of the other two guys need to be rostered in any leagues yet. So. I don't believe they should be either. I would start Jones with confidence still. Yeah, yeah, borderline running back one this week for me. So, uh, jump it over to wide receivers. Devontae Adams obviously must start. He has yep. wide receiver one potential all season long. But what Always guys, gets the targets. What do you guys think after him? Alan Lazard, Marquez Valdez, Scantling? You, you know, dart throws? You Anything to do with them, guys? If they are run-heavy offense like expected to be, I'd, I'd, I don't see wide receiver two really giving you much value in this offense. Agreed. Uh, we might as well just skip over tight end, I think. Yeah, I don't. I would not be starting any of them. No, nope. you know, just to say their names: Robert Tanya and Jay Sternberger. But yeah, nothing. Packers don't really use their uh, tight ends, so 
Jump it over to the Vikings. Kirk Cousins at quarterback. Is he a start this week, guys? He gets a decent Packers. Well, I should say more than decent. A solid Packers defense? Uh, I wouldn't be starting him. They're usually, I mean, since the new offensive coordinator came around, they're they're pretty much a run-heavy offense. So he's not going to get much volume. Agreed. Yeah, you'll see Cousins maybe throw it 22 times. Yeah, unless they're down, he won't reach 30. Yeah, yeah. They're going to want to run as much as possible. Yeah, if you have better options than Cousins, hopefully you do. Definitely stay away. Uh, Running backs, Delvin Cook, Alexander Madison. Cook seemed to, to eat when he played the Packers last year, but he might have that contract extension on his mind, even though he says he's uh he's a hundred percent in on Sunday. You guys, you're cool with start. Obviously, Del- you're starting Delvin Cook if he plays. Yeah, yep, and you're expecting some big points because the Packers cannot stop the running game. And money until proven different, they can't stop the running game. Yeah, yeah. But if for some weird reason Delvin Cook's out, Alexander Madison. One of the best handcuffs in fantasy football. Definitely, definitely start him if Cook's out yep, for some yep, reason. Yep. Uh, jumping over to wide receivers, there's a there's a big hole there without Stephon Diggs. It's just Adam Thielen, and then they drafted Justin Jefferson to try to take Diggs' Diggs's spot. Uh, Thielen, the only start in this wide receiver group. Yeah, for now. It's just too run-heavy of an offense, and Kirk Cousins only looks at him Thielen's way most of the time. Agreed. Yeah, I think Thielen's <laughs> going to eat all season long. He might see 130, 140 targets, you know. Probably he might even see 10 targets this weekend. Uh, Minnesota's tight ends, Irv Smith Jr., Kyler Ru- Ky- Kyler. Kyle Rudolph. I like Irv Smith as their tight end one. On the team now, I think he's gonna. He's more talented, more dynamic. Rudolph. Yeah, he's definitely the tight end I want to own. But I, uh, I'm gonna stay away from him. This I'm gonna stay away from those tight ends. Yep, this week. me too. Vikings favored by three. You think they win this game, guys? I'm gonna go with my heart and say no. I think the Packers go into Minnesota and win this one. Vikings win it. They control the run game. Better defense. All right, moving on, guys. Next game, Chargers at Bengals. Chargers only favored by three, which is a little weird. Tyrod Taylor. I th- you got, he is a borderline start for me. This is such a good matchup. Yeah, it's hard not to like this matchup. The Bengals are the, were, were the worst defense in the league last year. I like it more for... Eckler and company, but uh, I don't know. I mean, if Tyra, if got he's running, rush, he can be a line. quarterback borderline one. But if he's not running the ball, there's no chance. Agreed. Um, running backs, Austin Eckler, Justin Jackson, Joshua Kelly. Austin Eckler must start. He has running back one upside, especially in this matchup. Uh, Tyrod's not known for throwing the ball downfield. Eckler's, right, Eckler's gonna eat, guys. You just yeah, you... I agree. I agree. He's top five running back. Yeah, this week he is a must start. No wide receivers: Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Uh, Mike Williams being injured uh, scares me. I know he. They're saying he's he might be able to play, but I'm staying away. Where do you guys have Keenan Allen though? And in, in in the rankings. Borderline wide receiver too. Yeah, he's more wide receiver. Scared of him. Tyra Taylor does not like to use the wide receivers that much. If anything, it's going to go to Hunter Henry or Eckler. Or he's going to take off with his feet. Yeah. You definitely saw Honestly, it hurts Mike Williams' value a whole lot more than Keenan Allen probably. Definitely. Allen will still see his targets, but yeah. it hurts them both. Uh, Hunter Henry, though, the tight end. I love this matchup. Me too. 
Hunter I think Henry, he'll be really good. Yeah, Hunter Henry, he could probably be the tight end one this week. Mm-hmm. I have, yeah, I, I like it a lot. Cincinnati Bengals, guys, quarterback Joe Burrow, obviously. It's kind of a tough matchup. I'd personally stay away. What do you guys think? I'd stay away for the first week. Chargers have arguably the best secondary in the league. If you waited super long for a quarterback and this is the best one you got, I mean, there's worse options out there. So if he if he's got weapons, he's got mixing, so I mean he might be able to surprise some people. I'd yeah. be scared though to start him. I mean, fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agreed. Uh, I think it's more uh, – let's segue to running backs then. I think it's – if they have any chance of winning this game, they're going to have to try and control it on the ground with Joe Mixon, I think. So uh, uh, Mixon's definitely a start. Yeah, he's probably going to be a start every week. Yeah, you drafted him to be one, so. Uh, wide receivers. The often injured A.J. Green is back. Tyler Boyd, John Ross, they drafted T. Higgins. You guys cool with uh, starting A.J. Green, starting Boyd this week? I, guess I would start Boyd best, and Price at A.J. Defense. Green. Boyd's more than likely going to be in the flex, so he's going to see more of the targets. A.J. Green's going to get shut down by Casey Hayward more than likely. So, yeah, I'd probably start Boyd. Stay away from A.J. Green, even though you drafted him as probably your wide receiver two. Or three, hopefully you're three. Yeah. The play, you got anything to add? I'd just go with Boyd this week. Yep. Yeah, agreed. Tight end, CJ Ozuma, don't play him. Skip through that. Um, yeah, Chargers are favored by three. I think they win this game 27-23. I, uh, I think the Joe Burrow has a coming out party, and I think they beat the Chargers. Low scoring game, Bengals win. Next game, Cardinals at 49ers. Arizona. Uh, quarterback Kyler Murray. He's being drafted as a top five guy. You see top five upside this week against a very tough 49ers defense. I don't think it's going to happen this week. I, he was real good against them last year. He was efficient last year, but I don't think he was a good fantasy quarterback when he played him. I'd be scared to start him against this defense. Agreed. LaPlante, You're probably a he better at? option. Where is he at in the fantasy six-pack rankings? He is at 10, right at the end of QB1. Yeah, that's a pretty good spot. I'd probably actually put him lower. But uh, running back... Kenny and Drake, Chase Edmonds. Drake was in a walking boot a couple weeks ago, but everything uh, is pointing towards he's going to be 100%, and he is going to be the bell cow guy. And that's how I see it. I think Kenny and Drake's going to be okay. Uh, this matchup, a little tough, so I temper expectations, but he's uh, definitely an RB2 still. I agree. Yeah, he's an RB2 with the PPR value. Right. And then... Uh, Jumping over to wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald. Guys, I've been saying it all offseason. Temper your expectations for DeAndre Hopkins. He's not going to see the 100. I agree, man. No targets. chance he sees that There's much too again. many mouths to feed. He's going to see Richard Sherman this week. Obviously, you drafted him. You're going to start him. but Yeah, definitely a starter, but don't be expecting what you're used to. Agreed. In a pinch, you could probably start Christian Kirk. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, I'm not a fan. I wouldn't think about it yet. Yeah. Still playing anything to add? I would, I would probably stay away from Christian Kirk just because it's the Niners, but Hopkins, you have to start. Agreed. And the tight ends, Max Williams, Dan Arnold. Very, 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 very deep dart throw in Dan Arnold if you want, but other than that, stay away. Jumping over to the 49ers now. Quarterback, obviously, Jimmy Garoppolo. Is he startable, guys, against this Cardinals defense? No, I don't think so. It's just too run heavy of an offense. I I don't like I don't I wouldn't if I was going into this week with Jimmy as my starter, I'd be a little scared. 
Yeah, and his weapons are poop. Yeah. So you talked about the run heavy offense, the plant, Raheem Mostert, Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon are the running backs. Which uh which back you want? If I'm going off last year, I'm gonna go with Raheem Mostert. He proved it in the playoffs that I bet the organization loved that and they're probably gonna give him the first opportunity. I think he's clearly the number one. Agreed. Um, wide receivers, like we said, they're they're all banged up. Debo Samuel, Kendrick Bourne, Brandon Ayuk, Trent Taylor. None of them are starts. It sounds like Debo's not even going to play. I don't want to start any of them. No. But I will tell you who I do want to start, and that's tight end position, Greg Kittle. You start him this week. He's going to be the tight end one. <laughs> yeah, he's going to gonna go off. He's All the targets are going to funnel towards him. Yeah. Uh, 49ers are favored by seven and a half. I think they cover. They win this game 28-20. I think they smash them. I think they cover too. Jumping over to the game of the week, most people are saying, guys. Buccaneers at Saints. Tom Brady led Buccaneers. You starting Tom this week against the tough Saints defense? If he was at home, maybe. But it's it's risky because he's in New Orleans. Yeah, I think a, I think it'll be such a good game as shootout. He's I would be stirring him. He's also down Mike Evans most likely. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like Mike Evans isn't gonna play. He's still got Chris Godwin. You might see a little more from Scotty Miller, but obviously with Mike Evans being out, Chris Godwin definitely start him. Um, Even if uh, Mike Evans does start, I would I wouldn't expect much. Marcus Lattimore has had his number over the years. Yeah, we skipped over running backs, guys, but that's okay because uh, Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, I'd uh, – Not much to mention. I'd be scared to start either of them if you have to put one in the flex. You're hoping yeah, you're hoping either just – Unfortunately, you probably drafted them decently high, so you might have to start them. I would probably go with Leonard Fournette still just yep. because the tail's probably a little better. Um. Tight ends, O.J. Howard, Rob Gronkowski, Cameron Brait. Uh, obviously, Grock's probably the guy you want because of the red zone work. But, yeah, he top 10 tight end maybe, but he's not someone I'm excited about plugging into my lineup. No, until he uh, shows that he can do it again, I'd probably stick away, stay away. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the Saints. Drew Brees, is he a start? Yes, Buck's he defense is. defense was pretty horrible last year, their pass defense anyways. I, I want to start a lot of people from this offense, except for the running backs from Tampa. Agreed. Yeah, it's I, Brees is a top 10 quarterback for me this week. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray at running back. Alvin Kamara, obviously, running back one. Latavius Murray, I think, might have standalone flex value as well. Especially if they get up in this game, they might want to try and ground it, pound it on the ground. What do you think? I think Latavius can be maybe a flex option because obviously they're not going to be giving the full workload to Kamara because of his back. Michael Thomas, obviously, wide receiver one. He must start. Are you guys, do you guys trust Emmanuel Sanders to do anything? <coughs> Because I'd throw him at time and time probably. again, time and time again, the running or the wide receiver two doesn't do anything in the Saints. I'd throw him as a flex. I, he's got some talent. Nothing more than a flex. Jared Cook, nothing more than a touchdown dependent tight end. If you got to start, you start him. Start him, I guess you know. Um. Buccaneers were favored by four and a half. He guys take or sorry, Saints are favored by four and a half. I'm gonna take the Saints. Uh jump into the next game. Cowboys at Rams. Cowboys favored by two and a half. Dak Prescott obviously a must start this week, right? I agree. Yeah. He's got so many weapons. Oh man. Plus I don't know, actually the Rams defense is somewhat good, but still with all those weapons, which you saw last night in the game with uh the Chiefs weapons win out. He's got a ton of them. I expect him to do very well. Yeah, he's a plus he can run. Yep, yep. 
top three potential. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, the running backs, and Zeke, obviously, much start. Yeah, obviously. He's going to be fine this week. Yep. Start him every week. <laughs> uh, wide receivers, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and they drafted C.D. Lamb. Amari Cooper <sighs> being shadowed by Jalen Ramsey. Man. Want nothing to do with him. Amari Cooper is Houdini as it is. And yeah, right. A stud like that. I'm good. Gal could be sneaky for wide receiver three or two. CD Lamb maybe as a flex. He can he can easily catch a bomb for sure. I I wouldn't I wouldn't be too scared to start him. Yeah, either Gallup or CD. If not Blake Jarwin, will probably be the guy you want. You okay with starting Blake Jarwin? Yeah, I'm okay with starting Blake Jarwin. Yeah, I'm okay with it as well. Jumping over to the Rams now. Jared Goff. Uh, borderline QB1 for me. You guys okay with starting him if you have to? I would be. A lot of tough matchups this week for some quarterbacks. Yeah, if your back's against the wall, you could start him. But if you got another option, I'd go that route. Yeah, Cowboys lost some guys in their secondary too, so... Um, but it's a little weird seeing Malcolm Brown at the top of the depth chart for running backs for the Rams. Do you are you guys buying that, or do you you like Cam Akers better this week? Marlon Brown, your guy. What do you think? I think I'm staying away from all of them. I don't, I just don't know who's gonna get the most carries. It's gonna I, who know a few weeks might not even help it. So it might be a rough running back situation all year. Knowing Sean McVay, he's going to stick to his word and go running back by committee. Yeah, most likely. Uh, sw- sliding over to wide receivers, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Josh Reynolds. Robert Woods is the guy I want to start this week. I agree. I'd start him and Cup, Cup with a little bit less confidence. Yeah, both of them are probably starts. This is going to be a high-scoring game. I agree. Hey, uh, are you guys buying into the tight end hype on the Rams? Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett at all, or no? I would start Higby, but I wouldn't expect what he was doing last year, that's for sure. But you yeah. still got to start him. Yeah, you got to start him, but he's probably a borderline tight end one. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, Cowboys are favored by two and a half. I definitely think they cover. I got the Cowboys winning 28-20. Yeah, there's just too much talent. I think the Cowboys yeah, will like, Just like the Chiefs' talents win, man. And then uh, finally moving on, guys, our last game of the, of the week. Steelers at the Giants. Steelers favored by three. Big Ben coming off elbow surgery this offseason. Can you trust him? I think uh, you can. Yeah, Versus the Giants. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> this is this is the matchup you want if you if, to see if you can trust them. For sure, especially since it's on the road. Yeah. Uh if you drafted Big Ben you're starting him this week. This is uh, yeah. a prime time matchup. It, 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 it's a good idea. If you drafted him, start him. Running back, uh, James Conner. Tomlin came out and said as long as Conner is the workhorse, or as long as he's healthy, he's the workhorse. So if he's healthy, plug him into your hopefully running back two slot and be okay with it, you know? Oh, yeah. It, even when he... Didn't play 16 games and only played 13 games. He still finished running back six. So as long as he can stay healthy, he has the potential to be a workhorse. Yeah, he catch passes out of the backfield as well. And like I said, this is a juicy matchup. Giants defense is not good. So I like a lot of people in uh, a lot of people in this game. Me too. The wide receivers, Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, James Washington. Juju obviously struggled last year, but I like uh, his chances to have about Start him, season. obviously. And I think he's uh, – you start it, 
man, forget about it and just roll with it. It'll be okay. Thank you, start Deontay Johnson, too. Yeah, you throw him in a flex if you want. Maybe even Washington, but that I'm thinking more him for, like, DFS and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because he will be cheap. Yeah, and he's the big play guy. All it takes mm-hmm. is that one play. Uh, tight end Eric Inger- Eric Ebron. He was the last guy in my tight end streaming article. Like I said, juicy matchup. Tight ends are kind of sketchy. I'd be okay with starting Ebron this week if you have to. A lot of touchdown upside. I'd be okay too. Big Ben's kind of like Phillip Rivers. He likes his tight ends. Yep. Yep. Uh, we can hop on over to the Giants. Uh, Daniel Jones catch it a lot. Yeah, he's Matthew Barry's ride or die, which kind of blew my mind. Weird. Even though he's the Giants have a horrible schedule, tough schedule. They start out against the Steelers, then they start out, and then they go and play the Bears as well. So those are two tough games out the gate. I just think Daniel Jones is going to struggle at the beginning of this season, man. Which yeah. might even go into effect all year. He turns the ball over a lot, guys. That's always a problem. Yeah. You know, fumbles, interceptions, and yeah, the Steelers like to, the Steelers got a great defense, and they'll take the ball away, no doubt, you know? Yeah, ever since they got Minka Fitzpatrick, they've been able to turn the ball over a lot more. Yeah, really solidified that defense. Um, Running back, Saquon Barkley, obviously, what could you say? He's Start. great. Probably best running back in football. No, nah, he. Uh, sorry, most talented running back in football. He's definitely. He the most might have a player. rough first week. Yeah, yeah. It's t- temper your expectations. Like I said, if Daniel Jones has a tough schedule, Saquon has a tough schedule as well. But you drafted him mostly at number two overall, so you got to roll with him. I trust Saquon's talent over Daniel Jones. Oh yeah. The wide receiver core, though, you know, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, Darius Slayton. If you had to pick one, guys, who are you rolling with? I've heard a lot of buzz about Sterling Shepard. I, th- I think he could be the wide receiver one in this offense. I agree, Sterling. He was even doing stuff pretty well with uh, Odell there. Finally, he is fully healthy. He can finally be the number one. Let's yeah. see if he can actually do it. You think Darius Slayton's the red zone target or no? Yeah, or the big play guy. I think probably uh, Evan Ingram will probably be that red zone target for Daniel Jones. Yeah, don't sleep on uh, Golden Tate, though, guys, because, you know, he always sees a ton of targets. But, uh, yeah, Mike, to your point, Evan Ingram. He obviously has uh, put up a decent amount of points the last few years, but all the wide receivers were mostly injured. Do you think he could put up those good numbers with – all the wide receivers healthy? Minka is probably going to be on him, so I don't know. I would probably not expect too much from him this week. I don't think Minka can keep up with Evan Ingram's speed. Ooh. That's interesting right there. Where's <laughs> Ingram, Ingram must be a freaking bazooka. Where's Ingram at in the rankings, pal? He's easily top ten. Oh, yeah, the volume is there. He is, uh, where are you, buddy? Oh, not even in the top ten. Yeah, I was going to say he's probably not. Jeez. Twelve? Tough defense, guys. Yeah. Oh, no. He's number eight. Oh, way to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to find him. But, yeah. Uh... I'm okay starting him as a low-end tight end one. Yeah, just be a little scared of it. Yeah, it's just a tough matchup, but the talent's there. But, all right, guys, well, we finished it up. Uh, We went a little longer than we anticipated, but we're still a work in progress. Hopefully we do a little better next week, get a little better every week, you know. Um, But if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. Uh, like I said at the top, follow our YouTube channel at uh, Fantasy Six Pack so you can listen to all the, the other good podcasts that we that we have as a website. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at dclemens twenty two twenty two, 
Uh, guys, go ahead. Tell the listeners where they can find you as well. Plant, you can go first. You can find me on Twitter at, at be like underscore Mike with two eyes. Mine would be at I two one two one. All right, guys. Great show. Thanks a lot for listening. Peace. We'll see, see you next week. week. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other.